Would you believe me if I said this is the last place on earth you can find the pure strain of a cloud river rainbows? Well, you should stick around and maybe decide for yourself. A chub. Well, this little creek chub is certainly not our ideal quarry, but I'm very happy that we got him because that uh, that kills the skunk. And yeah, man, no better way to be back home in Missouri than getting on a beautiful, beautiful creek chub. Sweet man. Well, let's uh, let's send him back swimming. See you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> hey, man. I will always take a creek chub any day of the week. There we go, much better fish. I would say that this is a much closer representation of the, the average here at Crane Creek. That's a just beautiful fish, man. Let's uh, get this guy back and maybe catch some more. See you, buddy. <laughs> nice. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we drove so far to get on that fish. I, I can't sing the praises of the Missouri Wild Trout enough. I mean, this is where I cut my teeth, man. But what's very cool about Crane Creek, and I think it's maybe worth a little bit more uh, attention, would be the, the taxonomy of these wild rainbow trout, or at least the alleged taxonomy. So I think now is a perfect time to take it to the desk. Future Mike, take it away. The McLeod River Rainbow, or the McLeod Red Band, or even the rainbow of the world, this little trout, the McLeod River Rainbow, is a very special trout and it has kind of an interesting history and I think that's what I want to go into today. I want to look a little bit closer why this famous river from, well, the great state of California has any relation to some tiny trickle in the backwoods of Missouri and it deserves a little bit more spotlight, deserves a bit more attention. So. I think now is a perfect time to get into that and maybe explain why you might want to make this trip if you're a true wild trout junkie like myself. And again, I'm not a historian. I'm not some biologist. I'm just some, some dude. I'm just some guy. But over the years, I've you know read a lot, researched a lot, and I've, I've, I've developed a cursory understanding of the situation. And I think it's, yeah, it's important to note, kind of get a better background of you know, these wild places and these wild fish that, you know, we like to target. So getting into it, <laughs> the McLeod River, all the way over on the west coast of California. I mean, this was the epicenter of the, the mass, uh, mass production of rainbow trout throughout the world. So in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the rainbow trout was the new kid on the block. But the whole concept of, of, of stocking trout into cold water fisheries was not new. I mean, they were doing this in Europe, they were doing this in Australia and Asia, Africa, I mean, all over the place. But like I mentioned, the rainbows, they were kind of the new kid on the block. So this was a big industry getting, you know, the fishing game departments from California, Oregon, where, you know, wherever on the west coast of both the United States and Canada, getting them bred and then shipped all over the place. So. Yeah, again, places like Europe, places like New Zealand or Australia, or even like South America, they can thank the fish and game departments of yesteryear for their amazing trout fisheries because eggs were shipped all over the world. And when I say the rainbow of the world, this is where they get their nickname. But you might be wondering to yourself, okay, Mike, this is all well and good, but where does Missouri fit into this whole equation? And back in the, 
Again, late 1800s, a place like Missouri was the gateway to the West. You ever heard of this thing called the Arch? I mean, it's synonymous with the, the Western frontier. And so a lot of the railroads that would crisscross and converge throughout the Western United States would all meet in a place like St. Louis. And so throughout the state of Missouri, you have so many different railroads kind of crossing through. And it's also convenient that the Ozark Mountains or the Ozark Plateau that is made up of the majority of Southern Missouri is a perfect environment for trout. There are untold numbers of spring creeks feeding into rivers and then just flowing cold, clean, and a relatively consistent temperature all year long. It really made for a ideal location for trout. And brown trout were tried as, as far as being stocked into and a couple streams they have wild trout, but for the most part, the temperature is the most conducive for rainbow trout, conveniently. So, all these factors, you think of the railroads, and then you think of you know the, the, the trout, and then the, the, the perfect environment, these McLeod River rainbows, I mean, they were, they were just set and ready to be put into these streams. And that's where, just over the railroad trestles in Crane, Missouri, this is where our story kind of comes to a, it comes to a close, or why this whole thing is so important. Because it is alleged that Crane Creek is the last location of the pure McLeod River rainbows. And in a lot of ways, you can look at this like, okay, what it, these are just claims, these are just alleged, and I, I get that. But a place like the McLeod River itself in California, it's not what it used to be. There are dams, there's been introduction of, well, not only non-natives, but different strain trout. So they've crossbred and the genetics are no longer pure. And I get how people can kind of get in the weeds on that and that, oh, you know, it, it matters what, you know, to the nth degree of purity these fish are for me to want to go catch them. I don't know about all that BS, but it is cool to sit here and say that I can, I can boast with, <laughs> without any really dispute, that these McClouds in Crane Creek, Missouri are the last McClouds. Now, that's not to say that a genetic study could come through and totally debar that. As of right now, I mean, just looking at them on a cursory level, it's hard to deny. They carry that red band look so well and they're, I mean, they're freaking gorgeous. So to have a little gem like this in Southern Missouri, especially for us Midwest fly anglers, it's so neat. And, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that Sasquatch thing. It, it doesn't have to be true, but just having that uh, legend, so to speak, is very cool. And it's like, it's something to strive for. It's a little pin you can put on your fly vest and say, yeah, I went to Crane Creek and I caught me some cloud river rainbows. So enough history, enough babble. Let's get back to the fishing and see if we can get some more cloud river rainbows. Let's go. Given all the factors of a you know late fall day here in Missouri, that was great that we got on the fish that we did. And yeah, I got to see a little bit more of Crane Creek. The good news is, is that uh, we're gonna come back tomorrow and give it, give it a full session. So I'm gonna cut here, try and find somewhere to sleep, and yeah, let's pick it back up tomorrow morning. After one hard crash in the parking lot of Walmart, we set our sights back on Crane and we managed to make it to our access spot and to the trail before the sun was even up. I was really eager and ready to get on this new section. As we snuck up to the first run of the day, my jaw about hit the floor. There were a few massive trout tailing at the end of a rather inconspicuous pool, but I knew we needed to be super careful 
as we started our approach to these fish because man, one wrong cast and they would spook for sure. Dude, that's the that's the fish right there, baby. Yes, let's go. Well, this is the kind of fish you want to start your day with, man. This is a beautiful, beautiful McLeod. Wow, out of this deep pool too. I did not expect to get him. So let's get you let's get you a quick look at this guy. He's beautiful. You can tell he's starting to get his winter colors on, man. That is such a gorgeous fish. Nose to tail, dimey dime. <laughs> Alright, I think it's time to send this guy back. See ya. Continuing on upstream, I noticed a particular pattern. As we would get to the riffle sections, it wouldn't be very productive, whereas in the spring and the summer, you could usually pull multiple fish out of runs like this. On a day like today, we were lucky to just find this one and then lose it. And the way that most of these Missouri streams work is that it is a shallow riffle run type of stream. Every now and again, you'll run into some very, very deep holes, and that seemed to be where the majority of the bigger fish seemed to be hiding. And as we rolled up to this one, oh my gosh, there were so many fish. And this is a phenomenon I like to call holding up or pooling up, because as winter starts rolling around, these fish like to congregate in these deeper pools to be protected from that wintertime weather that's about to set in here in Missouri. So. Even though it was cool to see all these fish, there was no chance in us even coming close to catching them. They saw us from a mile away. Oh, come on, buddy. Don't do that. Go. Well, that is one plumpy wild trout out of that fast stuff. He fought like hell too. Let's uh, send this guy back swimming. See ya. I tell you what, we've had to work for our fish today. That was uh, that was a nice, nice little guy out of that fast stuff. Like I said, but. Yeah, they are not coming easy. This has been kind of a grinder session so far. The cloud cover has been nice, but uh, yeah, water is really, really low and they are seeing me from a mile away. I'm kind of amazed to see how many big fish are in here. That's pretty cool. Might be something to keep in mind for the spring, but for the fall, <laughs> we just gotta keep looking at them as they swim away. Whew, well cool, let's uh, keep moving up. There's some real behemoths in there, so I kind of had to, ooh, kind of had to force this guy out of there. <laughs> Took him for a ride. Well, let's get him back in the water. We'll let him swim. See ya, buddy. Let's go, yes! Dare I say we're figuring something out? Look at this freaking beauty! That is so nice. <laughs> just out of that fast stuff again, just popped our dry drop up in there and boom, we got him. Okay, I think it's uh, I think it's time to get this fella back. All right, sir. Thank you much. See ya. Now that was a dimey dime of a fish. I'm a cloud, absolute masterpiece. <laughs> But I think it's worth talking about our setup real quick. We're rocking the Ant 
the leaf cutter. This is our three weight and it, ooh, it sings. And it's, it's been more of our shallow setup work in the riffle sections. And I'm using a dry dropper, but not just any dry dropper. For those of you out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's the adjustable. So we can take it and kind of move it up and down. You guys know what I'm talking about. Go check out the video if you haven't already. But what we've been actually getting a lot of our fish on is just a real um, goofy looking nymph. I don't know. There's not really a name to it. The best, uh, best thing I could say, it's like a rainbow warrior, copper john hybrid kind of thing. Up in the shallow stuff and that's what got him. So it's a good sign. It's been a little slow trying to figure out these Missouri fish again, but we're figuring it out. So let's keep moving up and uh, keep those fingers crossed. So let's go. Nice, yeah, there we go. Now you gotta love that, a fish at the bridge in the fast stuff. Oh my gosh, just another beautiful fish, holy cow. <laughs> Let's send him back. See ya. Well, at least we didn't get skunked in session two. That's awesome. Nice. Oh, yeah, baby. That is so wild. Okay, so what just happened there is one went after my dry fly and I set the hook to that, but there was one munching on my nymph and that is like he he has it in his freaking mouth. That is so wild. <laughs> You're one crazy son of a gun. You know that? Oh, there he goes. Nice. Let's go. This cloudy afternoon started to turn into evening, and I could tell that this session was just about done. We weren't finding many more fish other than this absolute unit of a creek chub. This thing was massive. It's a freaking chonker, God bless America. Look at you go, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. See ya. Overall, <laughs> this two day trip was absolutely amazing. It was the perfect welcome home after being gone for way too long. And I just have to say, I'm already eager to get back and catch some more McLeod River rainbows. Well, if you're seeing this, that means this adventure is done. And all I gotta say, as always, is thank you so much for sticking around and watching these videos. I mean, it is crazy how quick this channel is growing. If you haven't subbed yet, consider it, man. We are putting out all sorts of fly season content, like this backwoods Missouri hometown adventure, or, you know, out west. I mean, we're doing it all. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe. And if you're digging all the fly season content, as always, I just gotta shout out you know, the mainstays. We got the Instagram, we've got the Discord, and we've got the Patreon. So go check those out. And something new, something brand spickety new for fly all season is the website. So click it clack on those keyboard keys and type in flyallseason.com and go check it out. We got all sorts of info, kind of chronicling our adventures. And then yeah, a little community page, all sorts, you know, there's just so much over there. Go check it out. And folks, as always, wherever you find yourself, be it in, <laughs> the hollers in Missouri or in your backyard. I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.